impossible. <laughs> impossible to have a quick run here. This road has gotten so bad. And then they pave random portions of it. And then the paved portions are honestly worse than the unpaved portions. Oh my goodness. What's going on guys? Motonocity here. So I was looking up the product page for the R1 and I just, so I just searched Yamaha R1 on Google just assuming that the R1 page, product page, would be uh, the number one result, which it is. But you know how it previews the Google image research results and it shows you like four images? Well, in those four images was the thumbnail for the video that I made telling people not to buy the R1, the new R1. And yes, that is the bike that I'm riding, the new R1. This is a 2020. Of course, it's, you know, biased with my search history. So I opened up a private window and turned on my VPN and still, <laughs> God, that front wheel, that thumbnail showed up in like the sixth or seventh uh, top result for just searching Yamaha R1. And when I saw that, I knew I needed to make an update video about this bike for people that are interested in buying it. I do need gas though. I went on like a, just a sprint a couple weeks ago, or last week, can't remember. That new flash on here is like primo with the pump gas. Dangerous intersection right here, gotta watch out. By the way, I am freezing today. Not anymore. I, uh, if you guys didn't know, I'm partnered with Engine Hawk and they have a thermal liner that you can buy and just wear with any jacket you want. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not cold anymore. It's a chilling 61 degrees outside, I know. I know, I know some of you guys are going to be just like jaw dropped, shaking your head at me right now. I understand, I agree with you. Normally I'm not like this. Normally just like the cold, is, it's cool. But for whatever reason, this morning it was like 45, but I went out for my ride and it was around 60. And I was like, bro, I am, I'm cold. So I put on that liner, now I'm good. That's my story. Thank you for attending my TED talk. But again, I do need gas. We're not gonna run out of gas today. Oh yeah, I keep losing my train of thought. I ran on like a little sprint run on this without turning on my camera. I just went out and rode and uh, used up my whole tank of gas. <laughs> so I need gas again. I didn't forget my wallet. And also for whatever reason, I grabbed my Jeep keys when I left the house today, so. Pockets ain't empty, just. Three, two, one, go. That was like, <laughs> an extra 5% throttle. So yeah, I made a video a while back why you should not buy the new R1. And I did it around a, a year after owning this bike. And I bought it in the summer after this bike came out. Woo! And the primary reason that I talked about not buying this bike in that video was the fact that there was no available ECU modifications on this bike. You couldn't flash it, you couldn't dyno tune it, you were stuck with how this bike came from the factory. And for a bike that costs $17,500 MSRP, close to 20, where well you got taxes, registration, you're spending a lot of money on a bike that is severely restricted and you can't do anything about it. And I'm a big R1 fan. You can still do everything else. You can still put on an exhaust and it'll sound great. And you can do all your cosmetic mods and it'll look outstanding, but you're restricted. And this bike is severely restricted from the factory. All right, let's get some gas. $12 of fun. Bro! I was watching him. I thought he wasn't gonna stop. handed downshifts. Not as easy as on the S1000. By the way, it's Thanksgiving week. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Got a discount for you guys. 20% off of everything 
on my website, motonasi.com. Link is down below. If you use the code BF20, get all the Daily 100 merch. So got some Life's Better with Horsepower stuff, stickers, reservoir covers, like this guy right here, actually. Do I have some more of these? I'm not sure. Shirts, hoodies. If you're getting a little cold, got hoodies, got key tags. All that is on my website, so go check it out. But today, let's talk about this bike. So you're spending, you know, close to $20,000 on a bike that is severely restricted from the factory. You can't do anything about it. There's so many other options out there, including basically this exact bike. The 2015 to the 2019 Yamaha R1 is the new generation. It just doesn't have the cosmetic and minor changes that this one has. Because this was the mid-cycle refresh. That has changed. Do you guys know? You can tune it. You can flash it. You are no longer restricted with this motorcycle. And that changes some things. While I'm not a Yamaha fanboy, I do like my Yamaha bikes. And arguably, I do like my S1000 more than my R1. But the R1 is an outstanding bike. There's a reason that I owned my 2009 for four years or four and a half. There's a reason that I said that I was gonna get this one when they did the mid-cycle mid refresh. I think they're really good bikes. Affordable leader bikes, so affordable for the everyday man or woman. Get all that leader bike power in a bike that doesn't cost 25 to 40 grand. Granted, leader bike versus other options is a completely different topic. We're not really gonna talk about that. The R1 is a really good option. And so now that you can buy this bike and de-restrict it, it's no longer the hard no that I had in that video. I still think that, you know, 17 and a half grand is a lot for a leader bike. I don't think everyone needs it. And I'm not one to say that you don't need a leader bike for the road because they just ride differently. Like a 600 is way less power than a leader bike, but it's not even about the power difference that I like a leader bike more on the streets. I just think it's more enjoy enjoyable to ride. But again, different topic. <laughs> I do think that you need to think about that price if you're thinking about a leader bike, because with prices creeping up and up and up, you're spending a lot of money for a motorcycle when there are a lot of good options that cost half as much. That's the reason that I was really excited for the R7 because 600s were creeping up and up and up. You know, you're spending 13 grand on a brand new 600. So they come out with the R7, which, you know, has a decent amount of power. It's obviously no 600, but, and you're, you're suddenly under 10 grand again. But if you want a leader bike, you're gonna be spending some money these days. That's just the situation. Once we've established the fact that we're gonna be spending some money on a leader bike, we're gonna get a new one. Is it worth the money? And you obviously have a lot of different ways that you can come at this. Is it worth the money compared to other leader bikes? Is it worth the money compared to other motorcycles in general? But for the R1 specifically, is this bike worth the 17 and a half MSRP? Most leader bikes these days are coming with the same options. You know, you have all your electronics, you got ABS, you got nice power. You typically have the same kind of features. At the end of the day, you're really just choosing between preference. All of them ride a little bit differently. The experience is a little bit different, but unless you're buying this as a track bike and you're going for something very specific, it's really about preference. Unless you're considering something like a Ducati, the S1000 or an RSV4 where you're gonna be spending a lot more. You know, you can get an S1000 for under 20 grand. I think if you're buying an absolute base S1000, no options, it's like 18 and a half, nine, something like that. And I do think a lot of people will like the S1000 more and just have to spend that extra thousand dollars or so. Because in terms of features, you're getting pretty much the same thing, S1000 to R1. But that's gonna be the case with pretty much every other manufacturer. You know, if you're buying the Triple R Fireblade, you're getting a lot of stuff over the base CBR. If you're buying the R1M, you're getting stuff over the base R1. If you're buying the S1000 with the M package or the M1000R, you're getting stuff over the base S1000. If you're buying a V4S or V4R, you're getting stuff over the base Panigale. My point is, once you have your preference on the manufacturer and the model you want, if you want to splurge for the extra stuff and squeeze in all that extra power and weight savings and knickknacks and tchotchkes, you can do that. But comparing base model to base model, I really do think that the new R1, now that you can flash this thing, is one of the best options out there. If you want to buy a leader bike, 
the price for the R1 is worth it. It's a great bike to look at. The cross plane is, you know, one of the best engines out there. There's a reason they've been using it forever. The uh, mod support is ridiculous. It's cheap to maintain. And because of its popularity and the fact that it is on the lower end in price for leader bikes, they hold their val value pretty well. The bulk of the value that they lose in depreciation does come in the first few years. But if you're fine with that, you know, it's okay to buy new. If you can wait, or you want to buy something that's older now and not get the brand new R1, but get the you know new generation. If you buy something that's four or five years old, they're not really going to lose a whole lot of value after that. I know the market on everything used in terms of cars and motorcycles is a little bit, you know, not average right now. But if we look at my 2009 R1, the value on that thing from when I bought it in 2013 is up. So I compare the value on the 2009 R1 from when I bought it to when I sold it in 2018, I think, 2017. It was about the same, if not a tiny bit more. And then the prices on them now, you know, three, four years later is also about the same. So I wouldn't go as far to say that it's an investment, <laughs> but if you're buying a popular motorcycle that's four to five years old and you're not running the thing into the ground, putting tens of thousands of miles on it and you're maintaining it well, you should be set up pretty well. So I don't know if this thumbnail will find its place in the Yamaha R1 search results. When I saw mine showing up there, telling people not to buy it, I knew I had to make another video updating you guys on my opinions about the new R1. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Use that code BF20, 20% off my website, Modenocity.com. Link is in the description. You guys have been awesome. I've been Modenocity. Remember, life's better with horsepower. Keep life lived, and I'll see you guys in the next one.